Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another Crazy Dev tutorial. In today's video, we're making an online multiplayer uh, controller thing, I guess. This is gonna be a really basic uh, two-player online multiplayer, so yeah. Okay, so first things first, let's create a new sprite. And I'm gonna name this sprite player. I'm gonna make a player sprite by just setting a outline of like 15. Choosing whatever color I want, I'll just do white. Okay, this went back to 4, 15, bam, bam, and I'll set the size of 50 because I rather big circle. I'll select copy, come here, paste it in, change its colors. Like so, and just make this player 2 inverted. I'll make a background because you can't really see the outline of the player 2 one. So I'll just make a, a nice gray background. There we go, and I'll name these costumes player one and player two. So this one will be player one, so this will be your player. This one will be player two, which will be the other player. Just player two. Cancel. Okay, so now we can jump straight in. I'll make this player one. Zero out your coordinates, and we can go. First things first, let's create some variables here. So I'm gonna create a variable called ID for all sprites, player count for all sprites. And make this a crawled variable actually. Then make a variable called player one, cloud variable as well. Player two, cloud variable. And then go I I already did ID. I go speed for all sprites. And we don't need that show uh, ID. And it'd probably just be best to keep the other ones shown. And I'll just put them kind of like this out over. But I'll leave the speed. I'm gonna change speed to a slider. Set it to say nine. And I'll change the slider range to one and fifteen, like so. So now I can just keep it capped to easily change it. Okay, so let's go. When we're gonna click, we're going to set ID to zero. So we're just gonna basically how this works is what we're doing right here is we're gonna set our ID to whatever player we should be. So if we need to move over player one, set our ID to player or set our ID to one. If we're at player two, set it to two. So we'll go link if I click this ID. And our oh yeah, and our ID changing if we go to player one or play two depends on how many people are playing the game. If two people are already playing it, then we can't we can't um, uh, join it. So we'll one if I click set ID to zero. Then what we'll do is we'll set player one to 500. 500. Duplicate this. Go player two to 500, 500. And basically 500, 500 stands for zero, zero, X and Y. So if player one, player two are both at zero, zero. So yeah, we'll just set it back to default because that's where you'll start out. Yeah, okay. So now it will, and then what we'll do is I, we need to go to zero, zero. So go to zero, zero. Then we'll create a clone of myself and then we'll wait one second. To give it some time to update these cloud variables. If you wanted to even do two, but I'll just do one because I think, I think that'll be enough time. So we'll go if, and what we'll do is we'll go if player count is less than two. So if there's not two players already playing it, so if player count is less than two, so if there's nobody or only like one or zero people playing it, then assign variables. So we'll go if and else. So we'll go if, and what we'll do is we'll if player count is less than. So if player count is less than one, set ID to one. Else, we'll set ID to two. Sweet. Okay. So that should automatically work. Then what we'll do is we'll go one group if I clicked, and we'll go forever. Oh yeah, wait, one more thing. Inside of these, when we change our ID, we need to change the player count by one as well. Stop trying to run, please. And we gotta reset our player count to zero. I'm just gonna keep that there, because lots of times it can... Make sure when you save or publish your game or whatever, it's player count is set to zero or else things will break. Yeah, so I'll go one group I clicked. Oh yeah, one more variable, I always forget this one. You create a timer, and you can probably just for the sprite only. And all we'll do is we'll go set timer to timer. And then what we'll do is we'll go when, and what we'll do is go when loudness is greater than 10, but we only wanna go when timer is greater than timer. So when timer is greater than timer, 
and we'll go if and we'll go if id is not equal to zero or no if id is greater than zero so if we actually got an id assigned and actually played the game we'll change player count by negative one okay so yeah basically this is and the reason you're like what okay so what when timer is greater than timer so events run even when the game isn't actually running um like when green flag click that is like running even as we wait here so when timer is greater than the, so being that we're always setting timer to the timer variable once we stop the game it'll stop setting timer the timer now timer also runs as we're waiting in the menu so this event detects that oh wait the timer variable is less than timer this our, our timer here so then we run this code so basically one timer is greater than timer and with this as well it just means when we stop the game okay now we can go one green flag clicked and we'll go forever and we'll go if and we got I actually do if and else and we'll go if id is equal to one so if we're, pl if we're player one i'll actually put this over here like just give myself some space so if id is equal to one We'll change x by and change y by. And we'll change it by um, uh, subtracting our key inputs. So key, uh, no, key space, space, multiplied by our speed variable. I'll hide our timer. Uh, so bam, multiplied by speed. And this is like a key input axis type thing. And I'll just change our x by that, duplicate it. And then change your y. And I'll go w or d minus a and then w minus s and i'll put that in there and then we'll set our player id or player one i mean sorry my bad to our x position plus 500 joined with our y position plus 500 so we'll join little plus 500 Plus 500 and what we'll do is we'll x position and y position so that joins it together and as you can see our zero zero coordinate equals 500 500 so we'll set player one to our x position like so and also i'll switch our costume if we're player one i'll set our player one our switch our costume to player one and then if we're not what we'll do is we'll uh glide one second and i'll change to 0.1 this will just make it so it's smoother when it's moving and it's not teleporting everywhere by using glide i need to set this like 0 0.1 to make it quick and what we'll do is we'll have to make this really long thing where we join all three letters of the first one minus five. Yeah, i'll explain in a second so basically i recommend so go join so put, grab two joins put them in one another and then subtract it by 500 then what we need to do oh wait, i forgot we need to join i'll do that so we'll join and what we need to join is join letter one of apple with letter one of apple with letter one of apple and i'll change this to letter one two and three of player one so the first three emma the first three digits of the player one variable which is our x coordinate plus 500 so we'll subtract 500 from it and that will return our thing so as you can see here we set player one to our x position plus 500 so x position is always equal to three digits so we easily can just grab the first three digits of player one so what we do to mean that our x position is zero player one equals zero okay and as you can see, so we plus add 500 to it, so it's always three digits, and then we grab the first three digits of player one, minus 500, and it returns our position. So our x is one, zero, this returns zero. Duplicate this and just swap this to four, five, and six. And you just might as well duplicate these again, because we have to use these for the player two as well. And I duplicated only the first part. Okay, there we go, duplicate. So insert these to x and y. 
you get really stretched that out. So that was like really long block. It's kind of annoying how long that is, and so many times I just wish Scratch had Vector 2, so that's fine. So anyway, let's come over here and now go to your control, and we'll go when I start as a clone. We did create, yeah, okay. So the, when I start as a clone, will be the other player. Or well, it'll be like if you're player 2. So basically, really what you want to do is just grab this whole forever thing. Oh wait, we forgot one thing up here. In this else part, let's switch our costume to player 2. Now we can duplicate this whole script, grab the forever, and put it in when I start as clone. Now what I'll do is we'll change it to if ID is equal to 2, we'll set player 2 to our X position, and then we'll glide to these other ones we have over here. And we need to change these to player 2 and player 2. Like this. Now you should just insert these to the Y position, X position, and bam, that should work automatically. Yep, okay. So now save this, and I recommend downloading this to your computer, and then packaging it up with um, a turbo work. Okay, so as you can see here, I ran both of them. And as you can see, I have my player over here, and I have my players over here as well. Now I come over and move, as you can see, the black one on the second screen moves as well. And by using that glide, as you can see, it's always gliding to each of those positions. So as you can see, he's not teleporting everywhere. Now there is a bit of a delay, being that we do have to wait like 0.1 seconds. But yeah, I think, yeah, if you guys want, I can make another video explaining another way of making it like, not as glitchy or as late, I think. But that will probably have to be for another video. But anyways, if I come over here and move this one as well, it works on that screen as well. So yeah, and then I can even change the speed variable on this one, and it doesn't change on this one as well, because we didn't make a cloud variable, but I can change my speed over here, and I can now move really fast, and my player still moves the same way. Then corner this one, and I can move as well, so yeah, really cool, and as you can see, you can even see the values updating as you move our character, so like that, and then that, and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, that's that, and that's how you do it. Now again, if you want to try this yourself, um, by using, without having to have like two scratch accounts or two devices, I just recommend packaging it on um, a Turbo Borps packager, but yeah. So I'm just going to jump back to our project. So anyways guys, that's that. Um, so yeah, that's all you have to do. If you guys enjoy this and want to see more scratch tutorials and maybe devlogs and just programming stuff in general, consider hitting that subscribe button. Or if this video was at least helpful to you, please hit that like button because that means it puts it out to other people. So if this video helped you, you can put it out and other people can watch it as well to see if it helps them out. So yeah. Anyways guys, um, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.